Now, President Obama is set to announce the man for a new White House job, a cyber czar who is expected to have broad authority on protecting governmental and private computer networks. And this raises fears that screws will be turned on online freedoms. And for more on this, we can now cross light to our Washington studio to talk to Dina Grusovsky. Dina, hello there. So over to you. Hello. Well, cybersecurity is really an issue that everyone is concerned about, and the White House is no exception. Barack Obama really ramping up on cybersecurity programs. Like you said, he wants to appoint a SAR to kind of oversee everything, and he's trying to get funding for his cybersecurity initiatives. But he might not get it. There's a bill that's making its way through Senate right now. And basically, senators and members of Congress are saying, look, we want more oversight. They want intelligence officials to report back to them. And then they want to decide on the Hill which programs go and which programs stay. Now, when we talk about this issue, the word secure comes up a lot. But right now, many Americans are wondering what this word secure really means. They're thinking that maybe this oversight might infringe on their privacy. They want to know, is this a way for the government to truly protect its people or to have more control over them? Well, joining me to discuss just that is Baron Soka. He is the director at the Center Net for Internet Freedom, and he's also a legal analyst. Thank you so much for being here and speaking with us today about this issue. Now, let's get right into it. Everyone is worried about this issue because they're wondering, is this a way for big government to snoop on its people? What are they watching? What are they downloading? What are they listening to? Or is this really all about Internet protection? Well, those are legitimate concerns. I think the problem is that security is, is a very vague concept. People don't really understand what it means, and it's very easy to sweep a lot under the rug uh, under the concept of security. I mean, the most legitimate concern, I think, comes down to the vulnerability of critical infrastructure. So U.S. government, like many governments, relies on Internet service providers, the, the so-called backbone of the Internet, to make sure that government websites function properly. And so the government is legitimately concerned about making sure that those things don't shut down. Um, so there is a concern about user privacy. There's a concern about the government being able to shut down private networks. Will they be able to do that? Uh, there was a proposal in the initial bill that would actually let the government shut down uh, private networks if the, if the uh, president declared a crisis. And that's a, that's a pretty scary idea. Uh, I think a better solution is to make sure that the government puts really truly critical and sensitive infrastructure uh, in a separate network. That's the way that uh, banks uh, and financial uh, institutions currently handle secure, uh, sec concerns about security. They have a separate uh, secure network so that you can secure that without having to change the way that the Internet in general works. Now, Barack Obama wants to appoint this cyber SAR. Uh, it seems like he, he's appointing a lot of SARs uh, recently. He wants to kind of have his own imperial family there. <laughs> but, I mean, who is this person? How much power is he going to have? And what kind of power are we talking about here? Well, the person hasn't been picked yet. There's a lot of speculation going on about who that's going to be. Um, I mean, on the one hand, it's not a bad idea for the federal government to make sure that somebody is actually monitoring the security and vulnerability of government websites. And we don't want to be able to, uh, to have our websites attacked by anybody domestically or, or abroad. So that, that's not a bad idea, and there's a legitimate need for, for some action there. Uh, on the other hand, if that person ends up having a large amount of oversight over the private sector and the rest of the Internet, it's going to affect not just Americans, but people all around the world, because it, it, it could indeed be a vehicle for increased government surveillance. If this person kind of takes advantage of his or her power, what will that mean for Internet users, not just in the U.S., but like you said, all over the world? Well, it, it really, at the end of the day, is going to be about... Um, on the one hand, uh, discouraging free speech. People are going to be maybe uh, more afraid to speak their minds freely, to conduct a search on the Internet for something that maybe is sensitive or to visit a, a sensitive or unpopular website. That, that's a concern that could develop. And on the other hand, uh, the government may just not do a very good job of trying to make websites more secure. I mean, again, security is really a, a broad category for, for many different problems. And, and at the end of the day, it comes down to individual website operators, network operators, making their sites and networks less vulnerable to attack.
Well, it's interesting that you mentioned free speech. I mean, how, how much will this change people's access to information? Because it seems like when there's civil unrest within a certain country, the first thing, one of the first things that the government clamps down on is the Internet because it could be used as a tool or as a weapon depending on what side you're on. So how much uh, will that change if there's greater oversight over the Internet? Well, it depends what, what that oversight looks like. Uh, if the oversight is more about um, the way that websites are, are written, the way that code is written, if it's a liability regime so that if some if your if your website is hacked, maybe your users can sue you. Uh, that's going to that's going to have a different effect than if the government comes in and uses this as a way of increasing surveillance. Uh, so again, there are concerns here about, on the one hand, the vulnerability of critical infrastructure, which is a legitimate concern. But if you if you extend that too far, you start getting into government control, um, surveillance of uh, of what users are doing online. And I I, I think we're probably not going to get that, but. It's hard to say without seeing in the end what the legislation looks like and knowing who's going to actually be this, the cyber czar. And the one thing I would add to that is that it, it's not just good enough to get somebody that we trust today or even legislation that's good enough today because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. I mean, if the Patriot Act taught us one thing, it's that giving the government a power today is, <laughs> is, uh, is probably going to uh, open the door for other abuses in the future and, and set a precedent for increased control or, or surveillance. Well, when people think of surveillance, they think of the Patriot Act, and it's no wonder that they're kind of worried, especially here in the United States. Thank you for being here today. This is an issue that's not likely to go away and definitely very interesting to talk about. Back to you there, Moscow. All right. Thanks for that, Peter is Dean and Gusonsky talking to cybercrime expert Berin Zoka, live from our Washington, D.C. studio.